Welcome to what is by far my favorite series I've made yet, Thrift Hunt, where I go to thrift stores, buy stuff like this Sony 200 count CD player that I can sell online and make some good money. They want about 35 bucks for this, and there is no listing on Amazon, so I will be forced to sell it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or Mercari, uh, probably just those three places. For used electronics, I will always want to sell them on Amazon, but that always isn't in the cards. This is a Pottery Barn charger hider. These go for about 55 or 60 bucks new on Amazon, seven bucks in the store. Now I could sell this for about 25 bucks plus shipping on eBay, maybe 30 bucks plus shipping, but I'm gonna keep this. It looks really nice. Uh, it'll match my kitchen. I'll, I'll put my phone in there to charge when I go to bed. I like this, so I'm keeping it. I want to keep this next item, too. I really like this. It's a cool 1970s litho. Uh, it's uh, glued to that wooden frame. And there is an artist signature, so it's not an original, like the original print. Really cool details like you see that. I love how this looks, man. Very, like, retro 70s-y. And as you can see, the author's name on the right uh, it says Litho USA. It's Gar. This guy's name, I think it's, well, let's see, Gar Barks? Gare Barks? Uh, and two sold in the past 90 days. You know, for what? I paid $9 for this. It's pretty big, so I will charge shipping separately, but I think I'll list it at about 75 bucks. I like it. It looks great. It's got that cool aged patina that matches the brown and yellows so well. I'm looking for more art now. This really caught my eye. It's very well done. It's an oil painting. I thought it was a print, uh, but you can see the brush strokes, the textures. Someone took a lot of care to frame this. The signature is R. Wilcox. And when I looked up R. Wilcox on my phone, R. Wilcox oil paintings, both on eBay and just on my phone looking at uh, Google searches, I was able to find this guy as a pretty decent um, catalog of work some sells for hundreds of dollars this uh, her name is nancy klotzel makes these very 80s uh, type of design i talked to my mom about it and she knew what that's called it's like a silky background fabric i forget the name if you know the name please i would love to know what it is i'm going to sell that i think what i might do for a lot of this art is i'm going to auction it off starting at like one penny plus shipping um, cause I, I'm trying to figure out what people like, what people want to buy this piece of art. I think I will sell as a buy it now. There's just too much on the table for it. Uh, there's one sold 20 bucks. If I auction it off, it wouldn't go for very much. Uh, and I think as a buy it now, I might be able to get like 150 or 200 bucks for it. It might take four months, but as you can see, someone has theirs at a thousand dollars. Uh, this one is 300 plus shipping. That one's 336. So this guy R. Wilcox. I'll have to do some more research, but I mean, I could tell right away. Very high quality work. Absolutely loved it. I love the design on this one too, though. This is a Sacred Heart Jesus print. Uh, I will auction this off. I've noticed that the Sacred Heart stuff does better. Um, I don't know if it's, I assume it's Catholic iconography. Uh, I like the fabric design on the interior of the frame in really good condition. It's lightweight, should ship for cheap. This will also ship for very cheap. The next thing I'm going to show you, it's a pineapple needlepoint. It says friendship and hospitality. The reason I picked it up is the pineapple. Pineapple is a great keyword. I've sold a lot of pineapple art over the years, pineapple jewelry. People like pineapples. It's like cats or owls, the kind of thing where people look for these things to decorate their home. It's a, a very good keyword, and I hope that on auction, maybe I'll get 10, 15 bucks for it. I don't know. Here's some more needlepoint stuff framed just around the corner in Dexter, Michigan. Uh, if the frames were in better condition, there's four of them here. I probably would have bought the four of them to auction off to see what I can get. Uh, again, I'm just kind of more exploring this niche, this territory. There's our illegal Eiffel Tower picture. No one's bought it yet. Few. I'm glad I don't have to call the cops, <laughs> but looking for more art. Um, I'm looking for good frames, looking for unique subject matter. Uh, and quite honestly, I don't think there's anything else new here. That Jesus print, that's a pretty common basic one, but the Sacred Heart one, I do feel pretty good about. I saw these, they came out after I stopped filming. It says the Raspberry. 
Another one says the Raspberry Radical. So what this is, it's a 1970s underground newspaper print. I mean, they actually printed these off themselves. Some of these go for good money. This one from Dayton, Ohio, not so much. I think they're cool, really unique piece of history, uh, but there's not really, at least around here or on eBay, a market for them. If I was in Dayton, Ohio, or if I was in Cincinnati, I might have bought these and tried to sell them for like 10, 15 bucks a piece and a lot of four, so that's like 60 bucks. But um, I'm not. I'm in Ann Arbor, so I left them. I'm going to need a little bit of help from you if you know what this is. I believe it's a candle holder. You put a candle in there and those little holes are what well, would allow it to uh, emit light. There is a very old cork stopper on top that I would not want to put around candles. <laughs> they could burn it pretty fast. On the bamp, <laughs> the bamp, on the bottom, it's stamped sassy. I look that up uh, and there is a lot of decent pottery by this artist the the most close listing is those two pottery candle holders with no cork stopper for about 60 bucks for the two of them i will list this individually at 30 bucks this whiskey decanter really caught my eye it was very striking had a cool pattern but as i began to examine it more i didn't see a maker's mark I saw a few imperfections in the glass. There were some bubbles. Uh, there were some parts where it wasn't shaved correctly. And I could not find the top stopper. So I said, I don't think it's actually worth that much. I found some similar ones that go for about 15, 20 bucks. So I left it, even though I did like how it looked. This is awesome. It, it makes checks. It's an automatic check writer, I guess you'd call it. Probably from the 60s or 70s. Right there, it says Paymaster Series X550. It cost $150 back whenever this thing was made, back before area codes. Uh, there was the salesman sticker, or uh, maybe the repairman sticker. It would have gone for about $40, bucks, including shipping. They want $10 bucks here. Really, it's just not worth it, although I thought it was pretty cool. Some more mugs. Having decent luck with mugs. Uh, I auctioned off that Starbucks Wisconsin mug I saw here. I bought it for $0.50, cents, sold it for about $15. I only bought it because you had to buy four. Uh, here's a, a Ray Dunn, Still I Rise, and I actually laughed at this. Like, <laughs> drinking coffee out of a mug, it's like, uh, well, one more day. That's kind of funny. Uh, four bucks. I did not see any exact comps or listings on eBay. I saw some uh, sold-out listings on Poshmark and Mercari. Uh, here's one on Etsy. 23 bucks plus shipping. I'll list it at 50 bucks. see if I get any bites. Uh, I wouldn't mind keeping it. It's kind of funny. This was interesting. I had never, I mean, I'm sure I've seen these before, but I'd never stopped and looked at them. It's a wax bowl. What's a wax bowl for? Uh, let's see. Habersham Candle Company makes this. Uh, it's actually a wax pottery vessel, if you want to be all technical about it. And it's just to smell good. Um, you don't light it like you do a candle, but it did smell very good. That's why I looked over and saw it. Here's a trinket box. Uh, I thought it was kind of neat. On the bottom, it was signed by someone's name. Looks like Ann Scavanda. I do not think she's a professional. Uh, there was some damage to it. The the flower stem was chipped. Um, I think maybe it's a, like a kit you buy or an art class. It looks kind of cool. It's kind of nice. I'm trying to learn more about these little jewelry boxes. I don't know a lot about them, uh, but I do think there is a good market there. I see a lot of, of uh, traction on eBay with this kind of stuff. As I turned the corner, I saw an employee putting out a bunch of Christmas stuff, and these were very bright, very vibrant. It looks like they'd always been hand-washed, always taken good care of. Coca-Cola Christmas glasses, uh, both clear and green glass. They wanted three bucks a piece for these. Three is that three bucks? Yeah, three bucks a piece for these. I, you know, they will sell next Christmas, uh, but I don't think I'd pay three bucks a piece for them. There's probably ten here, so thirty bucks for all those. That's about what they're worth on eBay. Uh, I'm checking the other mugs for any anything unique, any brands I haven't seen before. This Gans uh, April Birthday Angels thing, little f figurine, little like a tchotchke. Uh, one of the wings is broken. I thought maybe it's worth like 15 bucks, but again, it's broken, so it stayed on the shelf. I saw this cool 90s Reebok windbreaker. They wanted 10 bucks in the store like 30 years ago. This was, you know, the coolest thing you could buy. Probably about three years ago, it came back into style, uh, but now it's kind of falling out of style. You only get about 30 bucks for it. Uh, that was the exact same design. 10 bucks to make about $10 profit, maybe a little bit less than that. 
Uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. I want to sell clothing for around like at least forty dollars. Ideally, I can buy it for like five bucks. This sweater seemed high quality to me. I don't know why. Just the the layering and the designs on it seemed like the kind of thing you can't just make cheaply. But there are no tags on it. Uh, not even like a um, a materials tag. So even though they wanted eleven bucks for it, it stayed on the shelf. This Levi's, I, I call this an Aztec pattern. I think it has different names. Uh, that weird, big, bumpy collar is called a shawl collar. It's a cardigan, maybe you might want to call this. They wanted 17 bucks in the store. This would sell probably for about 35 bucks. It's all polyester, pretty cheap, so I left it on the shelf. I don't want to sell anything for that cheap that I'm paying 17 bucks for. It just is not what I'm looking to do. This, however, is what I am looking to do. This paperback book, I paid 50 cents for it. Uh, it's a journal of making The Empire Strikes Back, so it's not a Star Wars like fan fiction or novelization or whatever you want to call it. It's a book about making the movie, and uh, the comps are really good. This book sells for between 25 and 75 bucks, depending on condition. This one's kind of beat up, but I think I can still get like 30 bucks for it. If you it. want to turn this kind of resale business into a full-time income, you're going to have to figure out how to source two ways at once. So on one hand, I'm looking for easy bread and butter books that I can sell in lots like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. On the other hand, I'm looking for books like this, Masquerade by Kit Williams. And I didn't know what this book was before I saw it, but I looked at the cover and said, wow, that's a great cover. You can't just make that really easily or really cheaply. Someone took a lot of time to illustrate this. Maybe it's worth looking up on eBay and Amazon to see what it sells for. And sure enough, like I saw, it goes for about 30 bucks. Uh, I think with this book, you, you actually look for little riddles or hidden things in these pictures. I think a lot of people probably have good memories of this book they want to pass on to their kids or grandkids. And so that's why it sells for so much. I also want to show you this. I did an update on this in the store. Uh, yeah, Nancy Klotzel, if you can read that, took me a minute to figure out what it said. Found her on my phone. Uh, and sure enough, her art does sell for pretty good money. I found her personal website, uh, RO Gallery. I assume it's her personal website. And she has some art for sale there. Looks like the new stuff sells for about $275, $300. Bucks. So I do really think this is worth like $50, bucks, at least used. You know, I don't know. We'll auction it off and we'll see. But I think there is proof that it's worth uh, at least listing on auction. I'm going to auction this off too. I saw it said 1970 on the back. It says Julen Rorstrand, Sweden. Really cool design. I like the colors. It's meant to be hung. It's a, a you know a piece of decor. Three bucks to or sorry yeah three bucks in the store. Yellow tag. Uh, and then as I looked it up online, I saw it went for about fifteen twenty dollars. I went to, to a different store and I found that North Face sweater, five bucks. I'll get about twenty bucks for it profit. And then I saw this really cool matching jean jacket and jeans. Uh, I don't think it's from the 70s. It's it's a 2XL. There's no tags on there. This uh, flannel shirt, though, it says Key Saddle. It's kind of worn off. But that's what it says there. Uh, I thought it might be another good vintage flannel from the 70s pickup. It is from the 70s or 80s, but this brand only goes for about $15. How about that? That is an autographed picture of Orville Redenbacher, the popcorn guy. It says to Don Scott, I think. I don't know. Uh, I looked it up. These go for about 80 bucks. They wanted three bucks in the store, four bucks in the store. Uh, I do not think that it being personalized, someone else is going to matter that much. It's kind of a unique thing. If I can get 60 bucks for it, that is definitely worthwhile. It's a $4 pickup. Who wouldn't do that? I found a lot of unique things. I also found some basic stuff. This is a Sony receiver remote to a, a big receiver. RMU242 goes for about 15, 20 bucks. The way you test these to make sure they work, uh, I couldn't test in the store. You put batteries in them, obviously. And then you take your phone camera and point it towards that top radar area, laser area, whatever it is that uh, when, when the remote emits energy, it goes through that little bit of opaque glass or plastic and it'll light up red to, to make sure it works. Over in the mug section, found another Ray Dunn mug. This one is merry and bright, Christmas-themed, $3 for the mug. So when I looked it up on eBay, I could find some similar mugs that say merry and bright, but none with that gold lettering. They all have white lettering. 
Uh, some had like a set where one said Mary, one said Bright. That's the closest one right there, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll price this. I'll, I, I think what I'll do, and generally my rule of thumb, if I can't find an exact comp on an in-demand brand like Ray Dunn or Starbucks, I go at 50 bucks uh, because that seems to be like the higher end of what an impulse purchase is. This Montreal vintage mug seemed cool to me, but uh, no comps, so I left it on the shelf. Same with this Kamara mug. Kamora mug. I liked them, but there's just no, no market for them. There is a market for this. It's, uh, I think it's called, um, what is that? Uh, Precious Moments? It's made of plastic. That kind of threw me for a loop. I thought this is plastic, it's garbage, but actually there is a market for these. A whole bunch of them sold the exact same one, uh, no box. You can get about 25 bucks plus shipping. That's what I'm going for. Paid a few bucks in the store. It does work. I will also make a YouTube video showing the little song it plays so I can get some passive income going on my other channel, Demo Everything. I want you guys to know I'm not just someone who resells stuff. I like to make money in all sorts of fun ways. How about this vase? Big ol', I th I'd say 30 inches, hand-blown, amber, orange glass vase. Someone used it, I think, to, as like a, to put large plants in. Like, I don't know, maybe they put in cattails. Definitely handmade. I've seen these get made, and you have to have like two or three people making this. Whole lot of work. Uh, there is some rough up there on the uh, the lip of the vase, kind of like the trumpet part of the vase where it opens up. I'm going to keep this. $8 uh, It's a great deal. This kind of stuff sells for like $150 new if you look it up online right now. Um, I'm going to keep it for my house. If I were to sell it, I would only sell it locally. I don't want to mess with shipping this. It's huge. It's very heavy. Uh, but I liked it. What I will sell is this. Hand-painted hand blown little glass rose vase four bucks in the store again i'm auctioning this off if you want to buy it for dirt cheap i will link to the auctions below uh, and we're gonna get out of here on that note i did clean it off don't worry thanks for watching really appreciate your support watch more thrift hunt videos and if you liked it please give it a big old thumbs up see you later